If you have any interest in anti-aging and longevity, there is a good chance you have heard of the popular dietary supplement nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN. People selling NMN supplements allege all sorts of health benefits for anti-aging, longevity, even benefits for exercise performance. But does it actually work? In this video, we're going to do a deep dive all about NMN as a dietary supplement, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll understand, is this actually worth it, or is it just another overhyped supplement? What the heck is NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. It is a precursor for something that is super duper important for the cells of your body known as NAD. NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, it is essential for cell function. It plays a vital role in energy metabolism and how cells respond to stressful events and expression of different genes. And importantly, it is key for repairing damage to your DNA. NMN is a precursor for NAD, but it's not the only one. NAD NAD is synthesized from a variety of precursors, L-tryptophan, nicotinic acid, nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside, and NMN. How these different precursors are made into NAD occurs through a variety of different pathways. We're not going to do too much of a deep dive into those. NAD levels decline with age. Research suggests that NMN levels also decline with age, although lifestyle factors may impact levels of NMN. Some studies suggest that in active older adults, there are better levels of NMN in comparison to those who are sedentary. We also know that aging can compromise one's ability to produce NAD from NMN. People who have different age-related conditions like diabetes, liver disease, they appear to have lower levels of NMN and NAD. You see, aging as a natural process is characterized by a decline in energy production from the mitochondria in various organ systems like the pancreas, adipose tissue, liver, skeletal muscles, as it relates to decline in NAD levels. Now, I know the term anti-aging can be off-putting, like you know, anti-wrinkle creams and that sort, but anti-aging medicine is a really important area of research because the proportion portion of people on this planet over the age of 65 is growing. And with a growing aging population comes more age-related disease as a whole. Things like diabetes and heart disease, liver disease, these things become even more common as we get older. And with more people getting older, we need to make sure that we are advancing medicine in a direction that addresses those needs that are gonna be even greater in the future and current day. So why the interest in NMN? NMN is of interest because in theory, it can improve levels of NAD. And by improving NAD levels, you may improve overall longevity. NAD is known to activate certain proteins that help in repairing damaged DNA. Improvements in NAD levels may also have a protective effect on the brain. You see, the cells that make up your brain, they're really metabolically active. They have a high energy demand. NAD is really important for how these cells handle stress, and that could have implications for neurodegenerative diseases, things like Alzheimer's. It's also of interest in the realm of investigating heart disease. Specifically, in research looking at mouse models, NAD can help improve arterial dysfunction that is associated with heart disease. With age comes an increased risk of cancer. The longer you live, the greater the chances of developing a cancer. A lot of cancers develop as a result of cumulative changes to proteins and DNA and that sort of thing. So the longer you live, the more of that is accumulated, the greater the chances that you're eventually going to develop some form of cancer. And increasing NAD levels may have a protective effect by reducing oxidative stress and helping with repairing damaged DNA. There's also interest in NAD for protecting with muscle function. Decline in muscle function as it relates to age, it can have some negative impact, specifically in increasing risk of fall. Falls in the elderly, they're associated with a significant morbidity, lots of co healthcare costs. If we could prevent that by helping to improve muscle function, maybe through improving NAD levels, that would be a great, great thing. But does this actually work? Like, should we all be taking this dietary supplement? Everything that I've talked about up until this point has largely been done in cells in a dish and in animal models. Overall, there's not a whole lot of research in actual humans. There is some, and we'll get into that in a moment. But by and large, as it stands now, NMN to improve NAD levels in humans, it's really very sparse in terms of the literature. Online, you will see a lot of people take preclinical
chemical studies, such as those done in animal models or cells in a dish, and try and use those studies and the findings in those studies to extrapolate them onto humans in an effort to sell a supplement or some sort of cream, you name it. Human metabolism is very different from that of a rodent, and our lives are much different from a lab animal that lives in a, in a cage. And there are countless situations in medicine where animal studies looked really promising and nothing came of them when we translated them to human use. History is replete with examples of interventions and medications that looked really promising in mouse models, but then when we tried to translate them to humans in actual clinical trials, they flopped. They didn't do anything or they had negative health effects. Multiple drugs have shown to be effective in mouse models of Alzheimer's disease, but then when you actually give them to humans, they don't make a difference. Furthermore, a lot of things that show promise in the preclinical stages end up being harmful in humans. Take, for example, beta carotene supplementation. Sounded really promising, but in actual human trials, turns out that beta carotene supplementation ended up being associated with an increased risk of cancers. When it comes to NMN as a supplement, so far the research is pretty sparse in terms of being done in actual humans. One study of postmenopausal women with pre diabetes and overweight or obesity took 250 milligrams of NMN a day for 10 weeks. And at the end of the study, they showed an improvement in insulin sensitivity in their muscles. One study looked at amateur runners taking NMN supplement either 300 milligrams a day, 600 milligrams a day, or 1200 milligrams a day or placebo for six weeks. And at the end of the study, the runners taking NMN on top of their regular exercise routine showed an increase in aerobic capacity compared to placebo. Importantly, the higher doses of NMN seem to have a greater effect in comparison to the lower doses. The improvement was actually at the level of the muscle rather than the heart itself. And the researchers speculated that the improvement that they saw may have been related to an improvement in oxygen intake. One issue in older adults is poor quality sleep, and that in and of itself can end up leading to a variety of adverse health effects. One study looked at NMN supplementation on older adults in terms of sleep quality. They looked at Japanese adults over the age of 65 taking 250 milligrams of NMN a day for 12 weeks. At the end of the study, there was no improvement in sleep quality. However, those who took NMN in the afternoon did actually show an improvement in overall drowsiness and muscle responsiveness in comparison to placebo or to those who took NMN in the morning, suggesting perhaps there might be some benefit in terms of the timing with afternoon doses being better in terms of, well, at least drowsiness and muscle responsiveness. So of these human studies that I've showed you, they max look at 12 weeks. And as it stands now, there don't appear to be any adverse effects from taking NMN, but I caution you, that doesn't necessarily mean we have ruled out that it has any adverse effects. These are really short windows to be looking at something. There's definitely not sufficient data here to say for sure what the long-term safety of taking this on a daily basis is. The other thing we don't know about this drug is does it have any drug-drug interactions? Another NAD precursor, nicotinamide, I have talked about in other videos. Um, I'll link it down below, nicotinamide we know can interact with the medication carbamazepine. So it's advised that if you are taking that, which is used for headaches and uh, to treat epilepsy, seizures, that you avoid nicotinamide. It can have a negative effect on the metabolism of that drug and get too high and be, be harmful to you. We don't know to what extent this supplement interacts with other medication. These studies don't give us any information on what the best dose is. We don't have any dose response curve in any of these. I think these clinical studies raise a lot of important questions that really need to be answered before we can go about saying if this supplement is really doing anything of benefit. Sure, there appears to be some short-term improvement in select measurements in these select groups. Drowsiness in Japanese adults over the age of 65, uh, muscle insulin sensitivity in pre-diabetic overweight or obese uh, women, and an improvement in aerobic capacity in novice runners. But what does this mean as a whole? Even though you have an improvement in muscle insulin sensitivity, that's not necessarily telling us the whole picture here. Uh, to what extent is that sustained? Does this end up having any long-term clinical benefit? Does it plateau? What's the optimal dose? What types of patients will respond to this? How does it 
compare to standard of care treatments? And again, what are the long-term side effects? In the case of exercise and runners, you may conclude like, oh, this could be something beneficial in enhancing muscle performance and, and exercise performance. But this paper doesn't really support that either. It did, they didn't look at things like speed or intensity or recovery or anything of that sort. Do the effects plateau at some point? There's still a lot of unanswered questions. So don't get me wrong, I think NMN shows a lot of promise. It looks like an interesting supplement, but suffice it to say, it's being hyped up on social media and it has been for a while as like the fountain of youth. Everybody who is talking it up has financial interest in NMN supplements. It is in their best interest to make you believe that it is doing all of these things that we have no research to support that it actually does in actual human people. As our population ages, I'm talking to you baby boomers, you are a population that is uh, vulnerable to intense marketing for anti-aging because with age there do come a lot of different health effects and here in the states specifically that can be super expensive no one wants to spend their retirement or older adult years with all of these health problems it is so smart to be thinking about your health in this way but don't fall prey to anti-aging supplement marketing nmn while it shows promise the research simply does not support the claims that are being made about this dietary supplement but wait there's an exciting twist in the nmn story as of october 2022 here in the u.s the fda has revoked nmn's ndi status previously the fda had accepted NMN is a new dietary ingredient or an NDI. As of October 2022, the FDA has revoked NMN's NDI status, meaning it cannot be sold as a dietary supplement any longer, at least in the US. Why? Well, because NMN has now been authorized for investigation as a new drug, so it cannot be sold any longer and marketed as a food or supplement. So of course, the supplement manufacturers are all up in arms. They hate this. They feel as though it's not fair. Uh, on the one hand, it's there to protect the commercial interests of big pharma, unfortunately, but it also prevents unscrupulous individuals from bypassing passing FDA approvals to just sell something that has no proven benefit. As it stands now, it looks like they're active ongoing trials looking at NMN for Alzheimer's, for something called Friedrich's ataxia, as well as for uh, COVID-19 and kidney disease. The hope is that we can actually get some answers, you know, uh, see, does this actually work? What are the health consequences? Is it actually beneficial? Dose responses? Contrary to what the supplement sellers will tell you, it's actually probably in your best interest that it not be sold as a dietary supplement, because what if they find out that there are some adverse long-term effects? Is it actually banned though? Mm, here's the thing, unless the the FDA goes out and actually does something to enforce this, there's not much that they're going to do to stop people from selling NMN. I think last year something similar happened with the dietary supplement N-acetylcysteine and it was like, oh no, buy up all the N-acetylcysteine, people who take that as a supplement. But I mean, you could still buy it. So it's not as though, you know, policies and, and things like that, they're only as good as they are enforced. I think one company got served a letter from the FDA, but other companies did not. So they continued to sell it. So only time will tell what the fate of NMN is going to be as a dietary supplement or as a treatment. You know, if the research ends up showing that NMN is indeed effective for things like improving muscle function, having true effects, beneficial effects on longevity, um, I would imagine, you know, we'd get some really expensive drugs out of it. Uh, you know, drugs and, and pharmaceuticals here in the U.S., they, they are expensive. Maybe worry about that bridge if we ever have to cross it. On the other hand, you know, you can look at something like fish oil, which is uh, something you can get now get as a prescription, um, but you can also still buy it as a supplement. So there's that. Just because it goes through all of these hoops and hurdles, and gets approval as a drug uh, and goes through all the research and rigor, a lot of times it's still sold as a supplement too. As it stands now though, it's unclear if NMN as a dietary supplement really does anything. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a waste of money. I would not waste my time or money on NMN. Why? I'm not a mouse. And as it stands now, most of the research has been done in mouse models, cells in a dish, and I'm not willing to just take that kind of risk based on human studies that are only you know, max 12 weeks and not relevant to me. Is there any way to increase NMN and NAD naturally? Focus on a healthy diet. You can get this naturally from uh, things like broccoli, edamame. Of course, it's in small amounts, but uh, eat a well-balanced diet 
Exercise can improve NAD levels. It's been demonstrated in older adults who are active and get good quality sleep to protect your brain, your muscles, your immune system, all of that is key for fighting off cancer and a variety of other diseases of older adults. The problem with supplements is that they bypass all of the, the answering of those important questions and they just stick with what's observed in a dish in a mouse. But like I said, you're not a cell in a dish, you're not a mouse, and all those questions are really important. They really need answers before you could say to what extent this is gonna be beneficial for you. So better to hold off and stick to things that we know actually benefit you in terms of longevity, like eating a healthy balanced diet, getting good quality sleep, and importantly, moving your body and exercising regularly. That's really important, especially when you are, I mean, it's important across the board, but it's something that older adults really need to make sure that they are not slacking on because there is a lot of morbidity that comes with loss in muscle mass, and mobility, including an increased risk of falls that can land you in the hospital for a long time. Going to the hospital, it's not the best place to stay healthy, unfortunately. You don't get good sleep in there. There are lots of infections that you can be exposed to. So you want to stay out of there in your older years, stay active, stay healthy. You just have to do those things. You, you just have to do them. There's no escaping it. There's no magic pill. There's no magic supplement. All right, y'all, that's what I have to talk about in today's video as far as NMN. I hope it's answered your questions. Now, as a reminder, I do have another video kind of related to this topic on another NAD precursor, uh, nicotinamide, otherwise known as niacinamide, the oral pill and its role in skin cancer prevention. So definitely watch that video next. I'm gonna pop it up here on the end slate. You don't wanna miss it. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.